Regular meeting number 14 will now come to order. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. I have a promise to you tonight, President Ginther. My prayer will be short because I know your agenda is long. It's a blessing to be with you. You join me in prayer. Gracious God, we do thank you for this opportunity to come together tonight to serve you. We ask that you bless the council members. The president, all who serve this city, those who come tonight to make an appeal to make a case. Help us. All to open ears, open hearts, open minds as we come together in this time of a civil and open discourse. May this time be blessed by you, as always. Amen. There and as I begin to read this resolution uh, in support of the Columbus Urban League Young Professionals Group, I'd ask for the CULYP to come forward, please, as I uh, begin to read in the sake of time. I have a resolution uh, signed by all members of council to recognize and affirm the Columbus Urban League Young Professionals Association as a vital part of the mission to empower African Americans and disenfranchised groups through economic, educational, and social progress. And the resolution uh, reads in part, whereas the Columbus Urban League is a community-based nonprofit organization founded in 1918 as an affiliate of the National Urban League to empower the disenfranchised groups. And really what we're excited about and why I ask everyone to come down um, is whereas the Columbus Urban, Young, uh, Urban League Young Professionals Association is reestablishing and reconstituting itself and with the renewed vigor and enthusiasm to create inclusive communities throughout Columbus on March 27, 2015, to ensure that the city is at the best place to work, to live, and to raise a family. Uh, so therefore, uh, uh, we have this resolution. I'm so excited. I've, I know just everybody uh, that is a part of this exec team. They're doing amazing work, and really they're doing it on behalf of uh, the entire city of Columbus. We, I've had the opportunity to attend a couple of, of their uh, soft relaunch, uh, and I ho uh, hosted an event. Uh, what they're doing for young professionals in Columbus is really amazing, and I'm really excited. And to add, uh, uh, the work that they do with the Columbus Urban League um, is uh, really uh, setting the stage for how our community will move forward in the next few years. So first I'd like to have uh, uh, President uh, Hightower uh, say a few words. Sure. 
Good evening. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilman Harden, uh, President Genther, members of uh, Columbus City Council. Thank you for this opportunity. As you know, um, I have been long gone from being a young professional. And so, um, but I am just excited that we have these young people who are um, helping to support and commit the work that we do at the Columbus Urban League. And so I'm going to get out of the way and let the real people who are doing this work and a part of this fantastic organization speak on behalf of the Columbus Urban League. But thank you for the recognition. Hello, everyone. Um, Council President Ginther and all members of City Council, thank you so much for having us. Um, my name is Habiba Kamigate and I have the honor of serving as President of the Columbus Urban League Young Professionals. On behalf of the Executive Board that joins me in leading this great organization, I'd like to thank you for this tremendous honor and recognition. The Columbus Urban League Young Professionals is a network of young professionals that strives to foster the growth of Columbus young professionals personally, professionally, and socially and to build a strong pipeline of future leaders, all while supporting the Columbus Urban League, an organization that has a rich history of empowering the local community and changing lives. Investing in the growth of young professionals is a true investment in the future of Columbus. Councilman Hardin and Councilwoman Page, I'd like to take this moment to personally thank you both for your early support of our organization. As young professionals today, we stand at the crossroads of change, and we recognize that it is our time to step up and continue the great legacy of leadership and excellence that many, such as yourselves, have laid before us. Our vision for the future is powerful, and our commitment to this great community is unwavering. As an organization, we are excited to carry this torch and develop our members into the leaders of tomorrow. Friday, March 27th, will mark a new wave of leadership, passion, and opportunity, not only for young professionals of this community, but for the city of Columbus as a whole. We are excited about what is to come, and we look forward to moving the city of Columbus from success to significance. Enhancing the urban young professional experience, growing and retaining our young talent, strengthening our footprint and fortifying our place in the future of the greater Columbus community. Thank you so much again for this great honor. Thank you, Ms. Kungadi. Does anyone have, uh, Councilman, have any comments? Councilmember Tyson. Thank you, Chairman Harden. I just want to um, just say congratulations to each and every one of you. Um, certainly just appreciate the leadership at the Urban League, and certainly you guys will be able to learn a lot from the leadership that's already there, but certainly be able to add to that leadership because you'll have new and fresh, young, fresh, young and invigorating ideas to be able to add not only to the Urban League but to our community. So I congratulate you. This is really all about, you know, a legacy, a legacy that, that uh, Stephanie, and, uh, and her team have put together, but it's a legacy that you guys will keep, keep, continue to carry on this torch and just really appreciate you stepping up and um, saying that you are leaders right now and, and will be the leaders of our community. So thank you for this work and um, we look forward to leaving this city to you. Thank you so much. Councilmember Hardin, could I just ask each uh, person to share their name and organization they represent? Sure. If you'd come forward to the podium and just share your name and organization you're representing, I'd appreciate it. Good evening. Katie and Lynn, J.P. Morgan Chase. Good evening. Jennifer Walden, I work at Nationwide. Hello, I'm Felice Green and I work for Alliance Data. Good evening, Tony Cunningham, and I work for them at the Columbus <laughs> Serving League. <laughs> Have you become a the Ohio State University? Brandon McRoy with Safe Flight Auto Glass from Wyland Park Civic Association. Kwame Christian with the Ohio State University, and I started my own law firm as well. Nick Bankston, Andrew Gither for mayor. <laughs> 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 Tierra Ross, J.P. Morgan Chase. <laughs> Good evening, Brianna Lynham with the Ohio State University. Samika Johnson, Ohio Department of Health. Elijah Carter, Victoria Seacoast Tour Operations. And Alexis Pounds with DSW Inc. 
you guys make me so I'm so excited. Like <laughs> this, this is our peer group, um, and really excited for the city. Uh, President Pro Tem Mills. Thank you, Councilmember Hart. And I just wondered if you all would share if there are any future dates of engagement for other young professionals who may want to get engaged, or any upcoming activities where people could learn more about your group that you want to share with the listening audience. Any upcoming dates? Um, on March 27th, which is this Friday, from 6 to 9 p.m., we will host our official launch of our organization. So we're hoping that everybody can come out. It's at Doc 580. Um, and we have more information, so please feel free to visit our website at cuoyp.org. Um, we also have a membership informational coming up on Tuesday, March 31st at the Columbus Urban League from 6 to 8 p.m. So we hope people can come out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Hardin. I would just like to thank President Hightower for allowing young professionals the avenue to step up to the plate. And thank you for what you have done being a trailblazer in our community and for, you know, the young professionals. I do know some of you personally. I look forward to meeting the rest of you very soon. And I thank you for what you're doing in your various organizations and for being a role model for me. I'm very proud of you all and a role model for the youth who are coming along behind us so that they can see success in our community. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Councilmember Paley. I will say I want to thank all of you. I've, I've, I know a lot of you also. Um, what a great organization the Urban League is and how great it is to see all of you here and representing the city that I love. It's um, really heartwarming and you got to be the best dressed young people in town. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> if there are no further questions or comments, I move for passage. Harden Klein, Mills, Page, Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you, Council Member Hardin, Council Member Klein, President Pro Tem Mills, Council Member Page. Yes, thank you, President Ginther. I would like to uh, take this opportunity to recognize the newest, one of the newer members to our team, Columbus City Council, Jasper Person. Thank you for joining us and I look forward to working with them. And also, I will have a public hearing on March 25th at 5 p.m. for the Education Department, and we would definitely like to see you all there. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Page. Councilmember Paley. Thank you, President Ginther. I have one resolution and several announcements tonight, um, but it is to honor the King Arts Complex and their youth, youth arts education program. Um, if the King Arts Complex um, team can come forward. They have um, received awards from Columbus Parent Magazine. Last year it was for the Best Arts Center Studio and this year the King Arts Complex won in a new category, Best Community Arts Center. I quote from the article, it was a very competitive battle but with their inventive blend of music, arts, and education, the King Arts Complex was awarded the new crown. Executive Director Neely, will you please approach? Thank, Thank you, you for Council joining Member us tonight. Page. Would you like to introduce everyone that you have with you this evening? I definitely would. Councilmember Paley, thank you very much. President Ginther and other members of Council. This evening I have the executive team of the King Arts Complex, Javon Collins, Program Director, Mark Cardwell, Assistant Executive Director, Darla Reed, Facilities Director, and the person I'd like to speak tonight is, um, <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Lynn, I just, I'm just teasing, with Lynn um, Logan Grimes, who is the Cultural Arts and Education Director. Well, the resolution tonight is to honor and recognize and celebrate the King Arts Complex and the triumphs of its youth arts education program titled the After School Arts Institute. 
The After School Arts Institute is a multidisciplinary year-long arts education program that offers free cutting-edge academic youth development and family enrichment programming to low-income urban children and teens grades one through nine. The visionary belief of the After School Arts Institute is that by connecting students and academic curricula to multicultural and professional dance, drama, theater, literary, media arts, music, and visual arts instruction, each student is afforded the opportunity to increase academic success, improve behavior, and become 21st century leaders like the ones we just saw. Yes. Um, daily lesson plans that include objectives, benchmarking, and other evaluation tools are developed by a curriculum team comprised of certified teachers, art educational educators, and professional artists. And students of the After School Arts Institute receives one hour of tutoring or homework assistance one and a half hours of arts education and instruction, 60 minutes of cumulative physical activity, enrichment and socio development and nutrition. And the mission of the King's Art Complex is to enrich and improve the quality of life in our community and society, creating enhanced understanding and harmony by preserving and fostering the contributions of African Americans through creative expression and education. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Columbus honors, recognizes, and celebrates the King's Arts Complex and its Youth Arts Education Program for being another great reason why Columbus is a great place to live, work, and raise a family. I would like to um, now leave the floor to you and your representative. Thank you so much. Um, Lynn Logan Grimes is the executive director of the program. She's the cultural arts director and she is the um, education director. And I'd like for her to speak because it's her vision that has brought our program to where it is today. Good evening, President Ginther and council members. Um, on behalf of the King Arts Complex, we humbly thank you for this recognition. It is our mission to use the arts as a tool to give our youth a voice educate them about their community at large, and to bring about a change. We provide year-round program, programming excuse me, for children ages 5 through 13. We host a winter, spring, and summer arts camp in which we reach almost 500 children. Currently, we have an after-school and a Saturday theater arts program, which not only encourages creative and artistic expression, but also helps our kids deal with day-to-day -day issues like conflict resolution, critical thinking, and self-esteem. One of the many strengths of our programming is that our kids are able to work in group settings and one-on-one -on -one with community artists. So not only are they being exposed to the arts, but they are also being introduced to lifelong mentors. So we like to say that we help bring dreams come to life. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions? Councilmember Tyson. Thank you, um, Councilmember Paley. I just want to congratulate you for uh, this award. I know that most individuals just think about the King Arts Complex as a place where we come to view art, and um, we come to um, view art in all its different forms. And I think that um, the work that you're doing with our young people is so important. And sometimes that's the work that's forgotten. And so I'm so excited that you received this award from the Parents Magazine, but uh, it also gives you an opportunity to really share this program with our community. And so congratulations to you. And um, hopefully more of our young people will have the opportunity to come in to learn about the arts, to learn about their heritage, and to really be around some great professionals um, as they're learning. So congratulations to your work on the after school program, as well as the other type of camps that you serve at the King Arts Complex. Thank you. If there are no other questions, oh, Council Member Mills. Thank you, Council Member Paley. I just wanted to say, I think the exciting part about this is what really is the impact in building future appreciative folks when it comes to the arts. As they introduce early, then we'll have appreciation going for generations and gener generations. So I'm really proud of this because I think it really sets the path for the appreciation of arts. And as we look at public art and the importance of those things, we'll have more people engaged and see the importance of arts, the more broad appeal we have to it. So I want to thank you all because I think the audience that you're reaching is the next generation that will sustain the arts for our community. So thank you. 
There are no other questions or comments. I move for passage. Harden Klein, Mills, Page, Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. I have a couple other announcements. Um, number one, as the new chair of the Veterans Committee for City Council, I am proud um, to recognize Representative Herschel Craig, the past member of Columbus City Council, who served in the U.S. Army from 1970 to 1972, was honored for his continuous support of veterans by receiving, he was inducted into the Military Order of the Purple Heart. Um, the, uh, he, this was at the State House. From what I understand, he received a standing ovation from, from both sides of the aisle. And after serving on Columbus City Council for seven years, he was elected to the Ohio House and is the ranking Democrat on the House Armed Services and Public Safety Committee. While on City Council, Craig led the Veterans Affairs Committee, which helps veterans meet their needs, such as housing. Um, Craig has introduced two bills aimed at employment for veterans and their family members at the State House. I was proud of um, Councilmember Craig when he was here, and I'm especially proud of Councilmember Craig as a state representative, so I wanted to make sure that we honored him today. I also would like to let everyone know about some great news for the City of Columbus. If I could have the team from the Jewish Center move forward, because I would like to announce that again we will host this, we will be the host city for the Maccabee Games. The games will be held July 24th through July 29th. They are an Olympic style sporting competition held each summer in North America. And tonight we have Miss Lisa Newark, Newmark, the president of the JCC, the Jewish Community Center, and Mr. Mike Clapper, the assistant director for the JCC and Karen Shore Meyer, the chair of the Maccabee Games. Would you please let us know a little bit more about the Maccabee Games? President Ginther, Councilwoman Paley, and council members, thank you for having us here this evening. Uh, the JCC Maccabee Games are a very exciting time for teens ages 13 to 16, where it is an Olympic style set of games that also includes social events and a day of sharing and caring where the kids go out into the community and give back. We will have kids, um, about 100 local delegates playing in the games and 750 visiting athletes. <laughs> they will come from 20 different cities and several foreign delegations, including Israel. We are one of three cities chosen for the summer of 2016. The other two cities include St. Louis and Stanford, Connecticut, but our, the week we're having it in July is a little bit unique because it's a little earlier than we've done in the past, so we can include kids before they begin sports in the schools August 1st. The athletes will be participating in many different sports across Columbus. Some of the sports will be basketball, soccer, baseball, volleyball, tennis, swimming, bowling, golf, just to name a few. We will start the week with an opening ceremonies that will be held at the Columbus Convention Center. It will be an Olympic style uh, ceremony, just like you see in the Olympic Games. And throughout the week, we will be all over Columbus at Easton Fields, um, many high schools, uh, St. Charles, Bexley City Schools, Wolf Park, Capital University, just to name a few. Um, uh, President Ginther and Councilwoman Paley and the rest of the council, on behalf of the JCC's Board of Trustees, we really thank you for letting us share this exciting news with you. Um, as the Columbus JCC, we are so excited to bring you the largest Jewish youth event in the world that summer. And I'm sure you're all wondering, what does this mean for the city of Columbus? So we have some exciting numbers we'd like to share with you. As was mentioned before, we'll have about 750 visiting athletes, and a lot of them come with their parents, um, 100 local athletes. We'll have well over 
over 100 coaches to get these kids uh, going, make sure that they are in the winning spirit. Um, a thousand volunteers from all over Columbus. So this makes it a very big and exciting deal. We expect hundreds and hundreds of visitors. Um, part of the fun of the Maccabi Games is that the 750 athletes are hosted by over 350 local households. So that's very exciting. But their parents and all the coaches and everybody else who comes in stays in our hotels. So <laughs> we'll have a, a huge economic impact on the city, which I'm sure you're all very interested in. And when you add it all up, when we talk about our hotels, shopping, sightseeing, use of tourist attractions, in and out of the airport, in and out of downtown and all over the city, we are expecting an impact of well over a million dollars, and we're very excited about that. So again, thank you for our opportunity to, the opportunity to bring you this really good and exciting news. And we promise to keep you updated. And we hope that the Columbus delegation brings home or keeps home several gold medals. That's our goal. So thank you very much. I want to thank you for coming to City Council to share your exciting news. I hope to join you at the opening ceremonies. And yes, of course, we're always interested in the economic impact, but as well as showing the world how diverse we are in the city of Columbus. Are there any other comments, council member? Okay, you were doing a shaking your head thing, okay. Um, thank you so much for coming down. I look forward to joining you, and we, and we do look forward to the economic impact, but also to showcasing our city to the world. Thank you for coming. Thank you. That's all I have, Council President Ginther. Thank you, uh, Council Member Paley. Council Member Tyson? Yes, I have two resolutions this evening. The first would be Resolution 0080X, and it is, I'm going to ask Mr. Plum to walk towards the podium, and it is to extend special recognition to Mr. Michael Plum on the, on the memorable occasion of his retirement and to celebrate his service to the City of Columbus. Whereas Mr. Michael Plum served his country honorably in Vietnam as a member of the United States Marine Corps and upon retiring to civilian life in 1973, he became a member of the Columbus Police Department, dedicating 26 years of service to ensuring that the streets of Columbus were safe. And whereas during this time with CPD, Mr. Plum used his superior sharp shooting skills as a sniper on the Columbus SWAT team where he gained notoriety for for his The Shot Seen Around the World on August 16th of 1993, in which he heroically diffused a contentious police stand standoff by shooting the gun out of the perpetrator's hands. And whereas, since retiring from the Columbus Police Department in 2000, Mr. Plum has used his knowledge of public safety in his role as a city's facility service manager a post he has held since 2007. And whereas in his tenure as a facility security manager, Mr. Plum applied for and helped secure federal grant funds to install surveillance cameras in several neighborhoods with the purpose of aiding police in tracking illegal activity. And whereas in addition to ensuring the city's department buildings are safe, Mr. Plum assumes many other duties including a little known identity as the programmer of the festive lights that adorn City Hall during the holiday season. Whereas throughout his distinguished career, Mr. Plum has demonstrated unwavering unwa unwa dedication to performing his duties and responsibilities with the utmost efficiency, competence, and professionalism. And whereas the enthusiasm and expertise Mr. Plum has shown in his endeavors have, have earned him the respect and admiration of those who have come to know him. He shall enter into retirement with the satisfaction of knowing that he provided valuable service to the City of Columbus for a total of 34 years and has established a record of achievement which will stand as a hallmark for others to emulate. Now therefore be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus that this Council does hereby honor and recognize Mr. Michael Plum for his dedicated service to the City of Columbus. I move for passage. Harden Klein, Mills Page, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Plum. The podium is yours. President Ginther, Council Members, thank you, thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. Uh, 
my life is going to go in a different direction, a family-oriented one from here on. But thank you again very much. Council President Ginther. I just wanted to, to thank Council Member Tyson uh, for bringing this resolution forward for our consideration and just wanted to thank you for all of your great service in so many different roles. I mean, it's almost like you've had three or four different careers serving the country, serving the city, and uh, helping to protect and maintain uh, an amazing uh, city hall for our visitors and our employees and a safe place. Uh, for folks to gather. So on behalf of a grateful city, uh, Michael, thank you. And uh, look forward to your next journey. Uh, we know that uh, you're retiring, which means you won't be here every day, but we know how to find you. Uh, yes, <laughs> and to be able to leverage your, your experience, your expertise, and your generosity uh, in the years to come. So Michael, thank you. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Councilor Paley. For the new members of council and for those um, viewing tonight, there is nothing more gratifying than walking into City Hall and seeing Mr. Plum smile. It just kind of makes your day. And I will tell you that we will miss that. Um, so congratulations, good luck on your retirement, but you will be missed. Thank you, ma'am. Councilmember Mills. I don't want you to retire. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but as I said to you um, earlier, uh, felt safe every day knowing that you were here. And um, I wish you the best in your future endeavors. And just want to say thank you to all of the nuggets of wisdom you gave me when I was safety chair and all of the conversations we had about police. And just want to thank you. And I remember on my very first day here, I was nervous as can be. And you said, it's just going to be all right. <laughs> you, so I want to say thank you, because I remember that I couldn't stand still enough for the, the photo. But thank you very much. I appreciate all that you've done and for the safety you brought to all of us and the peace of mind we have each and every day we're able to come into this building. So thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, Mr. Plum, I'm going to give you your resolution, and I, too, just want to just, again, just say thank you. You're just a great guy. I mean, you garden. I mean, you talk about your plants. You just, but you, you're just a, just a nice person, and just, I really appreciate who pleasure. you are. Thank, thank you. you. My next resolution, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Ryan Johnson, who is the Director of Office of Minority Health from Columbus Public Health, as well as he has a team of people that are with him from Columbus Public Health. And I'm also going to ask Ms. Mildred Hunter to please come to the podium also. And Ms. Mildred Hunter is the Regional Minority Health Coordinator of the Office of Minority Health from the office in the Office of the Assistant Secretary of Health um, and she's U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Region 5, and from Chicago. So if you all come to the podium, that will be great. This resolution is um, 0082X-2015 to declare April of 2015 as Minority Health Month in the City of Columbus. And whereas in 1989, the Ohio Commission on Minority Health developed the concept of a high visibility campaign designed to focus on health awareness and disease prevention. Whereas the resulting 30-day campaign would become Minority Health Month, which has become recognized nationally since 2000. And whereas Minority Health Month was designed to provide crucial information to allow individuals to practice disease prevention, promote healthy lifestyles, showcase the providers of grassroots health care resources and information, to highlight the 
the desperate health conditions between Ohio's minority and non-minority populations and to gain additional support for ongoing efforts to improve minority health year-round. And whereas the Office of Minority Health fulfills this commission by mon monitoring and reporting the health status of minority populations, mobilizing community partnerships and local actions, developing policies and plans to support health efforts and informing, educating and empowering the community. And whereas over the past year, the Office of, of Minority Health was heavily involved in educating the community and members about the Ebola outbreak through the planning of town hall meetings and presentations that explained that the role of Columbus Public Health during the outbreak and answered questions and addressed concerns about Ebola. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whereas the Office of Minority Health provided education on a variety of health issues through 19 forms and presentations reaching 905 Somali in the Somali community. And whereas, in addition to the above mentioned initiatives, the Office of Minority Health partnered with many advocacy organizations in 2014, such as the Alcohol and Drug Latino Women's Program, the OSU and James CCC Diversity Enhancement Program, to host a health and awareness event event impacting 120 residents. Whereas the Ohio Office of, Min not the, the Office of Minority Health is working with many community partners to present programming throughout April that will bring attention to health issues such as hypertension, substance abuse, domestic violence, nutrition and wellness in the minority community. Now therefore be it resolved by this council of the City of Columbus that this council is hereby recognized April of 2014 as Minority Health Month in the City of Columbus. I move for passage. Hardin Klein Mills, Paige Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. Ryan. <clears throat> President Ginther, members of council, good evening. On behalf of my colleagues that are standing here, Mildred Hunter, Hebu Noir, Jesus Valle, and Virginia Clark, who's sitting in the back and didn't want to join us, <laughs> I would like to say thank you for this resolution of expression. My name is Ryan E. Johnson, and I'm the program director of the Office of Minority Health at Columbus Public Health. The mission of the Office of Minority Health at Columbus Public Health is to provide leadership to reduce health inequities in minority communities in Columbus and its surrounding areas. This is achieved through our four core competencies that Councilmember Tyson just said to you, to monitor and report the health status of minority populations, to inform, educate, and empower people, <clears throat> to monitor and report the health status, to develop policies and plans that support health efforts, and to mobilize community partnerships. I've provided each and every one of you with a packet of information highlighting our accomplishments for the past year, as well as activities during April, which is Minority Health Month. I want to take just a few moments to highlight some of the events occurring in our city during the month of April. On April 1st, we'll be conducting the actual kickoff to Minority Health Month, and this is in partnership with our own Columbus Public Health LGBTQ Health Initiative through a community conversation on health disparities. The focus will be on expanding the definition of minority and moving us forward to a place of full inclusion. On April 11th, in partnership with Amanda Sear, we'll be conducting a women's health workshop to di discuss wellness, self-image, and community resources, and the entire event will be conducted in Spanish. On April 15th, we'll be conducting a cultural humility training on the understanding the worldview of the Hispanic, Latino, and Somali cultures and how it impacts, uh, impacts health. And myself, Hebu, and Jesus will be conducting that. Um, we are part of the Columbus Public Health Fundamental Training Series. Last but certainly not least, we're hosting a series of community conversations in partnership with the Westside Community Health Advisory Committee. The substance abuse and mental health conversations will occur on April 4th, April 18th, and April 25th. So for more information on the Office of Minority Health here at Columbus Public Health and any information that I've shared with you this evening or in your packet, uh, please contact me, again, Ryan E. Johnson, Office of Minority Health, my number is 645-7335, or you can reach me at rejohnson at columbus.gov. Thank you so very much for allowing me to say a few words about the Office of Minority Health at Columbus Public Health. 
Thank you, Ryan. And I'm also going to ask Ms. Hunter if she wants to say a few words. Thank you. Good afternoon. As uh, mentioned, my name is Mildred Hunter. I'm the regional coordinator for the Office of Minority Health, Office of the Assistant Secretary for Health, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Region 5. To the Council uh, President, to uh, Councilwoman Tyson, and other members of the Council, thank you for introducing this resolution. Thank you for your continuing support for the Columbus uh, Public Health Office of Minority Health. As you know, this is, and as we discuss, this is the 30th anniversary of the Heckler Report, the landmark uh, document that identified the disparities in health status. The theme for this year is 30 years of advancing health equity, the Heckler Report, a force for ending health disparities in America. Thank you, and, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Thank you for being in our city, and I know you're going to be um, this Thursday, the Ohio Department of Minority Health will be having its kickoff for Minority Health Month. And so this Thursday, April 26, from 9 to 2 p.m. at the Vern Reif Center, um, they will be having um, free health screenings, line dancing, healthy foods, uh, massages, you know, just just lots of health, health incentives and more. And I want to also just ask the viewing and listening audience if they'd want to, to come to this free event, they would hear more about the, the, um, the Heckler Report and certainly know about all the different types of activities that, are be going, that will be going on during Minority Health Month. So I, appreciate, I thank you for coming in. I know that in the month of April we will also be having a hearing specifically on minority health with Ryan and his colleagues from Columbus Public Health. I look forward to to that hearing because you certainly want to share with our viewing and listening audience the, the, um, the movement that we've had in terms of working with, within our different communities regarding health. And, but we also certainly know there are certainly disparities within our health for the minority community. And we need to have that conversation around what this community can, can continue to do to make sure that everyone can certainly have great health and be able to understand what's needed to move their lives forward. So I thank you for coming down. This is a significant month. And and again, we do need to address the health disparities within these minority communities. So with that, thank you very much. I'm going to give you your resolution. Thank And I just have um, really two announcements. On April the 7th at 1.30, we'll start our hearings for all the social service agencies that receiving grant that will hopefully receive the grant funding tonight. Should we pass it? legislation that we'll be reaching out to you for you to be able to um, come down and share with our viewing and listening audiences all the services you're going to be provided. And then lastly, on Tuesday, April the 14th at 4 o'clock p.m., I'll be convening a um, my committee hearing for finance, health and human services and workforce development to hear the legislation that will appear on the city council agenda for the coming weeks. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Tyson. Any comments from our elected officials, uh, city auditor, city attorney? Judge Barrows, anything from the courts? This time I would ask uh, that the following ordinance be removed from the consent action portion of the agenda in the development committee, uh, ordinance 0693-2015. Any other requests from members of council? for the removal of an ordinance or resolution from the consent action portion of the agenda. Seeing none, may we now have a motion to waive reading of the titles of 30-day legislation by the city clerk. Is there a second? Clerk, follow the roll. Clark and Klein, Mills, Page, Paley, Tyson, President Ginder. Thank you. Will the clerk now read the record of the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda for first reading? Ordinance 609 2015, Public Service and Transportation Committee, Ordinances 257, 582, 759 2015, Technology Committee, Ordinance 750 and 758 20. 
33, 734, 735, 740, and 784 2015. Development Committee Ordinances 667, 668, 682, 689, 771, 772 2015. Recreation and Parks Committee Ordinances 509, 595, 698, 699, 721, and 737 2015. Judiciary and Court Administration Committee Ordinance 703 2015. Administration Committee Ordinances 180, 464, and 630-2015. Appointments from the Mayor's Office numbered A0047 and A0048-2015. Thank you. Uh, we do have two speakers uh, regarding consent agenda items this evening, but since we've removed um, 0693-2015, uh, Mr. Wilkins, um, that legislation will be considered uh, later in the meeting and President Pro Tem Mills will be bringing that forward, so you'll be called at that point. Um, our only other speaker on the consent agenda this evening is Robert Grinch. Mr. Grinch, welcome to Council Chambers. Uh, if you'd make your way to the uh, podium and share your name, address, any organizations you represent. Mr. Grinch, uh, you signed up to speak in support of 0771-2015, which is on the consent agenda in the Development Committee. Uh, you have three minutes, sir. President Ginther, Madam Chair Mills, members of council, my name is Robert Grinch. I reside in Columbus at 3506 Aaron Drive in the Syeda Woods subdivision. My residence abuts the parcel presented to you today in Consent Action 47. First, I wish to highlight for public record that the 16.3 acre pending annexation site, exclusive of roadway right away, was recommended in the City of Columbus Department of Development Planning Division's document titled Treby Roberts Area Plan, accepted by Council on February 28, 2011, as open space. Second, I wish to highlight for public record that residences in the neighboring Scioto Woods subdivision, Section 2, are zoned R residential and contain single family dwellings, approximately four per acre. Last, I respectfully request any subsequent development plan proposal approved by Council. One, acknowledge and minimize destruction of existing natural features, including 120 foot tall trees. Two, respect existing long-term Columbus Scioto Woods homeowners by permitting complementary development of no more than low, medium density residential of four to six dwelling units per acre. And three, limit proposed structures to no more in two-story height. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Grinch. Uh, any uh, comments or questions from council members for, for Mr. Grinch this evening? Thank you for coming down um, this evening. 
Assistant Director Jones, is there any uh, additional information you can provide uh, for Council at this point on 0771-2015? Not at this time. This is the initial statement of services, basically stating that if the annexation were accepted, that we would be able to provide the utilities needed. So there would be a separate ordinance coming forward with the actual annexation. And then, of course, any zoning considerations or rezoning would be separate of the annexation process. Thank you, Assistant Director Jones. Any comments uh, or questions regarding the consent agenda? Seeing none, may I have a motion for approval of these items designated as consent actions? Is there a second? Thank you. Clerk, call the roll by voice. Hardin? Yes. Klein? Mills? Yes. Page? Yes. Paley? Yes, with the exception of 0697-2015 and 0703-2015 on which I am abstaining. Tyson? Yes. President Ginther? Yes, consent agenda carries. We now proceed with the second reading, a 30-day table in the emergency legislation. Uh, the first committee is the Finance Committee. Councilmember Tyson chairs that committee. Madam Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, Councilman Ginther. And I am so excited to get to tonight. From We are going to have the opportunity to pass, hopefully pass, our capital budget. We have passed our uh, general operating budget, and so we're done with budget for just a little while. So this is a great night, and uh, we'll start spending those dollars and moving our community forward. So this is Ordinance 0052X-2015. It is to uh, ex accept the capital improvements program for 2015 through 2020 as described herein as the primary guide for capital improvements, budget ordinance, and to declare an emergency. By this resolution, the City Council accepts the capital improvement program, the CIP, from 2015 and 2020, and makes a, this is a primary guide for the 2015 capital improvements budget. The CIP reflects the remaining priorities from the 2008 vote of bond package and priorities identified in the 2013 vote of bond package. <clears throat> and for this plan, of course, we listen to our community. We also identify the priorities. Um, we shared our, the city's priorities with the community. And again, um, I just mentioned that the residents voted on a vote of bond package in 2008 and 2013. And, um, and when we, they have voted on this 86, 86 times, they've approved it out of 92 times. And so we're excited about that. And, <clears throat> and so with that, this helps us because we also have the ability um, when it's voted on ability to raise property taxes, which we have not done and don't plan on doing, so to make sure that's very clear. Um, but, but this also helps to um, contribute to our AAA bond rating that our city has. And so again, though, this is a guide, and this guide is based upon the finances of our city at the time. And so I don't know, Director Rakowski, do you want to add any other comments to this legislation? Uh, President Ginther, Chair Tyson, uh, other members of Council, just to say that the program itself or the plan, it represents nearly $2.5 billion worth of investment within the city's neighborhoods. And the more exciting piece of this is coming up in a couple of uh, pieces later with the capital improvement budget, which is really, this is our strategic document that lays out our longer term plan, but the annual budget is where we really uh, uh, put our uh, pedal there to the metal and we get a lot of dollars out into the community and we get uh, lots of really, really good neighborhood projects moving forward. So we're excited about that. Thank you. And we had a hearing last week on this plan and on the capital budget and all this legislation that's coming up. But we do have one speaker slip. It's Ms. Maudie Grace. Good evening. And she is a, you can tell who you represent tonight. Uh, Marty Grace, I represent um, the Southside uh, Area Commission and Deschler Civic. Uh, my uh, comments uh, basically was in approval of the package, but I'm also uh, wanting to request that we we talked about uh, group uh, activities which uh, we uh, co-op with 
other agencies, city, uh, government, and individuals. And I've spoken to the school board, and I would like to uh, let you know that uh, the Deschler Civic, uh, the Deschler School in the Deschler Civic area, uh, we are talking with the school board about opening, reopening that school uh, in not as a school but as a uh, area hub that we can have senior programs, programs for youth and things like that in hopes that we can also have city council participate in helping us get um, approval for the different uh, agencies that would, we would want to participate in that building, which we're looking at health and human services. We're uh, looking at recreation and parks and things like that. So hopefully we can get your approval to help us reopen that building to keep it from becoming a blight within the Deschler Civic area. All right. Thank you, Ms. Grace. And so what we will do is reach out to you. Uh, my office will reach out to you. We can talk more about this initiative at the, for the Deschler School. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Any other questions or comments regarding the CIP? If not, I move for passage. Miss Lynette, no, she's not, excuse me. I move for passage. Harden Klein Mills, Paige Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. The next ordinance is 0504-2014. And I'm going to ask Jamie Goldstein to start walking towards the podium because she was this is to authorize the Department of Finance and Management to contract with the Greater Columbus Arts Council, Inc. for the purpose of fostering and sustaining the arts and cultural services that enrich the Columbus community and to authorize expenditure of 97% of the 1.68% presently, presently estimated at 5852000 of the combined rates of 5.1% of the hotel motel excise tax and to declare an emergency. Ms. Goldstein, the podium is yours. Council Member Tyson, Council President Ginther, Council Members, thank you so much. I don't have prepared remarks. I'm going to keep it very brief because, uh, as we heard earlier, your agenda is very long. I want to thank you all for investing in the arts in our community. Uh, as you may be aware, for each dollar that the City of Columbus invests in the arts in our community, we return more than $34. Uh, to the economy in other earned revenue and other investments. And we couldn't do what we do without your help and uh, these funds from the city. And thank you very much. We're investing in artists, we're investing in arts organizations, and we're investing in our community. We appreciate your support. Thank you, Jamie. I just want to share that they support 67 arts and cultural organizations in this community. Um, they have three program areas in which they support the artists and those organizations through operating support, project support, and the boost grant. They also support a workforce of 3,800 artists and 5,700 other jobs. And lastly, they are engaged in this community by with 7,000 volunteers that support the arts. 431,269 children have an opportunity to be involved in the arts because of this of this of these dollars and lastly three million eight hundred ninety four thousand five hundred and sixty one audience members have been a part of those arts organizations so we thank you for coming down it is wonderful for this city to be able to support the arts we know that it adds to the quality of life for individuals and so without the arts Columbus would not be the great city that it happens to be so we appreciate these funds that 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 hopefully the council will again support for the arts organizations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your support. Any other comments? I move for passage. 
Hardin Klein Mills, Page Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. You're welcome. The next ordinance is 0557-2015, is to adopt a capital improvements budget for the 12 months ending December 31st of 2015, or such or until such a time as a new capital improvements budget is adopted, establishing a project budget for the capital improvements requiring legislative authorization in 2005, and to repeal ordinance number 0683-2014 as amended and, and to declare an emergency. This ordinance, this ordinance establishes our capital, our CIB. The budget presented herein represents a plan for the expenditure of monies of two, in 2015 for a variety of capital improvement projects. The new funding amount of the CIB is $690,600,000, and of that um, budget, I would say the whole budget is $906 million, point, point $4 million, and two. $215,795,901 in carryover funding for this year. <clears throat> so this budget collectively will improve our roads, sidewalks, and other critical public infrastructure. The CIB makes a $33 million investment in road resurfacing and alley rehabilitation. This budget also funds other major investments, such as $35 million in the recreation and parks, of which $10.5 million will be used to renovate Driving Park Community Center. This renovation will include a new 8,400-square-foot swimming pool, a new gym, better lighting, new HVAC, and increased parking. This budget also so we'll have funding to equip our safety forces with the tools that they will need to improve their effectiveness. And this budget also includes funding to demolish vacant and abandoned structures which endanger our residents. I would also note that $4.2 million of this budget of new funding was added through the council amendments to improve our focus again on public safety, resurfacing a neighborhood, a curb, curb, neighborhood curb reimbursement, and recreation, recreation and parks. Further, Council is investing over $1 million in home repair. Investments in home repair programs provide an opportunity for, partnering for, for participants to maintain the safety of their homes and address emergency repairs as well as, as health and accessibility. And so with that, um, I want to say I want to thank this Council for the work that they have done in submitting their amendments, but also the work in making sure this budget would will get passed, the mayor and his administration, all the city departments and the directors. I also want to thank Finance Director Paul Rakowski and his team with Rob Newman and Kyle Sieverhart, as well as Mr. Dorian. Additionally, I want to thank the Legislative Research Office, Kate Pashati, and also my staff, Nicole Harper and James Lewis, as well as the Columbus residents who work, who work, who we work for you each and every day, and these investments will continue to make sure that our community continues to thrive. Director Rakowski, any comments? President Ginther, Chair Tyson, members of council, I just want to thank City Council and, of course, you, Chair Tyson. The cooperation that we always have working together towards these great ends is something I think that is really pretty special to the City of Columbus. Uh, I just am looking forward to, there's a lot of great projects and now this allows us to begin the work on all of those and create a lot of jobs as well. And uh, so fund a lot of folks that are going to be working on all these projects, construction jobs and all kinds of jobs that are, that are going to be created through this good work. So again, just thanks uh, for all the cooperation and getting this as uh, quickly as we uh, can passed at the beginning of the year. So we have plenty of time to get this money out and get these projects moving forward. Other comments? If not, I move for passage. Second. Hardin Klein Mills, Page Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. The next ordinance is 0743-2015 to authorize the finance and management director to establish a purchase order for tire treading services from the treadway services for the fleet, <clears throat> fleet management division per the terms and conditions as established in a universal term contract and to authorize expenditure of $150,000 from the fleet management fund for the same to increase previously established auto certificates by $200,000 from the fleet management fund for emergency repair services or parts and to waive the competitive bidding provisions of Columbus City Codes for emergency repair services parts for same and to declare an emergency. Um, 
we have passed other resolutions similar to this. This is though to, again, to Treadway Services, and this would be for um, our fleet division, and this is in order for them to repair and service our vehicles. As I've stated in the past, we service over 40,000 work orders. We have 6,000 vehicles in operation and over 400 vendors. There are often times where sometimes we don't have a vendor that we have a PO with, and so we have to ask for emergency consideration to get those repairs done. And so with that, I will ask move for passage. Second. Hart and Klein Mills, Paige Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. The next ordinance is 0788-2015. is to authorize the funding for operating supports at operating support operating expenses at the Jerry Hammond Center and the Ohio Municipal Court building for, pay for payments to Paradigm Properties of Ohio LLC for building operating expenses at the Jerry Hammond Center and Municipal Court building to authorize a fourth year renewal of a facilities management agreement and to declare an emergency. This legislation is for $1,948,881. I move for passage. Hard and Klein Mills, Paige Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. I'd now like to move to health. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have ordinance number 0603-2015 to authorize the Board of Health to enter into contract with Everbridge, Inc. in order to continue a countywide mass communication infrastructure to authorize expenditure of $30,750.25 from the Health Department's grants fund to weigh the relevant provisions of Chapter 329 of the Columbus City Code relating to competitive bidding and to declare an emergency. This legislation is for the countywide mass communication notification infrastructure called Central Ohio Health Alert Network. It's a web-based communication system that enables the local public health leaders to effectively communicate information during a related emergency. We're asking for a waiver of competitive bidding because this is the organization that four years ago, that four years ago developed the system um, for our community. And so we want to continue to work with that organization. And with that, I move for passage. Harding Klein Mills, Page Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. The next ordinance is um, 0669-2015. It's to um, approve the grant applications of various social service agencies seeking financial assistance to address the emergency human service need pursuant to Columbus City Code and to authorize the Director of Development to execute grant agreements with various social service agencies to address and provide for multiple human service needs to authorize the expenditure of $1,616,380 from the Emergency Human Services Fund and to authorize expenditure of $2,133,918 from the general fund and to declare an emergency. The total funding in, for this ordinance is $3,750,298. I just want to add that there will be other ordinances that will have additional monies that will support those organizations. However, we had to split them up in different, different pieces of legislation. The total amount of money that will be going to those organizations overall will be about five million dollars. And so with that, I'm going to turn the mic over to Hannah Jones, the interim director of Department of Development. There you go. New title every week. Thank you, Chair Tyson, President Ginther, members of council. In December of 2012, the Columbus Human Services Advisory Committee convened to evaluate the city's process for funding social service organizations and programs and compare them to best practices throughout the country. At the end of a six-month review which evaluated the current program, assessed funding, and community trends, the recommendation was made to move towards a competitive funding process that would support goal-oriented, outcome-based social service programs and activities that address the critical needs of the Columbus community. In 2013, a pilot program was launched, awarding $300,000 in funding to seven agencies. The initial round of awards allowed us to evaluate and refine the larger overall competitive process for the 2015 to 2018 funding cycle. This new process allows City Council and the administration to identify their priorities and support programs that align accordingly. It has also provided an opportunity to bring new organizational partners to the table and further the levels of collaboration and coordination to better serve the residents of Columbus. For this funding cycle, three broad citywide priorities were identified. The first was to provide safety net services to our residents who are most in need. This would encompass emergency and basic needs services. The second focused on economic development, specifically around employment and self-sufficiency. 
The third was social success, programs that support safe and healthy individuals, relationships, and neighborhoods throughout Columbus. A request for letters of intent was made in May of 2014, and 159 letters were submitted for a total of $16.6 .6 million in funding. The letters were reviewed for eligibility, and 150 applications from 89 organizations were then invited to apply. 136 applications were received for a total of $14.6 million in funding. A 15-member grant review committee was convened to review the applications and submit recommendations. After review and approval by the administration, tentative announcements were made to the applicants in early December 2014. With the passage of the budget in February of 2015, the Department is now able to move forward with the final recommendations and begin the process of contracting with each of the selected organizations. I would like to thank all of the organizations who have applied and have continued to provide feedback and recommendations on the process and look forward to working closely with them and the Human Services Chamber to ensure that we continue to be responsive and refine the goals and procedures of this program in future years. I would also like to thank Keisha Hunley Jenkins in the Mayor's Office, as well as Director Brandon in her previous capacity with this department for all their work on this project over the last two years. I am happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't have any questions. Certainly, I've been so involved in the process. And so what we'll do now is we have um, a number of individuals who want to come and speak on this legislation. I'll just mention that we will be having a hearing in April to go so that everyone will know about these organizations and the services they're providing. And um, with that, I am going to um, ask our speakers to come up. The first speaker on the leg legislation is Carla Rothman. Thank you, Chairwoman Tyson. I'm Carla Rothen. I'm the Executive Director of Stonewall Columbus. President Ginther, esteemed members of Council, thank you so much for having me tonight to testify on behalf of our, our Stonewall Columbus. Um, we are very, we're very, very thrilled that we were able to apply and that we fit within your categories of priorities this year. Stonewall Columbus has been a nonprofit serving the community and Central Ohio since 1981. For over 10 years, the city has supported our efforts, and we are grateful that you are considering continuing that support this year. Stonewall Columbus operates the Center on High, which is the LGBTQ community center, offering programs and services for all of the citizens of Columbus. We operate a hotline each day and receive over 30,000 calls and emails each year. We never know when someone calls whether we are their first stop or their last resort, so we take very good care and consideration as we serve each client. Our outreach touches the lives of the most vulnerable, middle to low income individuals and families that are afraid to turn anywhere else for fear of rejection or prejudice. We have seniors, transgender members of our community who continually suffer from abuse and violence, veterans with physical and mental challenges, youth who have been continually bullied or made to be homeless by the people that are supposed to love them the most, their bigoted parents. Stonewall Columbus is there for them. The RFP that we offer for our center is for intake and referral and veteran service programs at the center. These programs change and even save the lives of many vulnerable people. We refer within our agency, of course, to the programs that we have, but then we also have our partners. Some of our programs, the Trailblazer program for our seniors, our free counseling program with a therapist that specializes in care for transgender youth and families, our Affordable Care Act program that helped hundreds in our community find affordable care, our health and wellness program that we did with Columbus Public Health. Of course, tonight you talk, they even talked about our collaboration, which I thought was awesome. Um, we offer free HIV testing, STD testing, coupled with counseling, 25 free mammograms, Medicare, Medicaid, and aging in place workshops, and classes for caregivers and spouses and families. We have support groups in grief, coming out, and of course our new veterans program support group. We work with the Veterans Affairs, and we work with so soldiers who were dishonorably discharged before the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. We help them to get their benefits back, their families' benefits back, and their honor restored. And then we also offer um, partnerships with other folks that we refer out, of course, and those are North Central Mental Health and Adam H. 
big partners. The Central Ohio Area Agency on a Aging, I already mentioned our Columbus Public Health, Franklin County Office on Aging, AARP, Huckleberry House, Star House, Life Care Alliance, the VA, open and affirming churches and civic centers and schools. It is our city, though, that continues to be our strongest partner for dedicating funds to Stonewall's programs and lifting up a community that has been marginalized, ridiculed, and abused. A city is often measured by the way it takes care of its most vulnerable citizens, and I want to thank our city and our city council for stepping up and helping us today. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Thank you for coming down and supporting the legislation. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Ms. Tashia Safford, representing the Center for Healthy Families. Good evening, members of council, President Ginther, and Chairman Tyson. I represent the Center for Healthy Families at 500 South Front Street. The focus and goal of the Center for Healthy Families is to ensure that we improve the lives of pregnant and parenting teens in our community. One fact, in Franklin County, we have more than 1,100 young girls every year that deliver babies. National statistics show us that only 65% of them live in poverty. 25% of them will repeat a pregnancy within 18 to 24 months and only 40% of them were, will graduate from high school. The focus and goal of the Center for Healthy Families was to launch the Healthy Families Connections Collaborative, which consists of a 12-member organization. And we all agree that the scope and complexity of teen pregnancy requires that we integrate and network our services so that it's a one-stop shop for teen parents. For every young person that is served through the Healthy Families Connections Collaborative, they are assigned a resource advocate that resource advocate stays with that young person for up to 24 months. Teen pregnancy is not just one simple issue. For those that are served by the Center for Healthy Families, we want to make sure that pregnant and parenting teens graduate from high school, that they delay second and subsequent pregnancies until they're better prepared, that they're engaged in healthy relationships, that they have safe and stable housing. With me today, I have what's called my angels. These are the direct service providers that every day they're in our community serving our, um, our community's most vulnerable. We also provide services in Columbus City Schools with a parent education support group. If this legislation is passed, you will not only support our community's most vulnerable, but those that are also disenfranchised. If you would like to learn more about the Center for Healthy Families, you can reach us at 614-884-4200 or link with us on the web at centerforhealthyfamilies.org. Thank you. Thank you. And could you just share the names of the two individuals who are with you? I have Melanie Hill with me, as well as Gwen England. Thank you. I just want to say that Melanie used to be a City Year core member and City Year leader, and she's still doing service. So it's nice to see you, Melanie. All right, thank you. And, and again, just the work that you're doing. So we're always making linkages, because it's important that we make those linkages, is that we know that in this community, we want to make sure that we have, we know about infant mortality and the issues around this. And so by funding this organization, it's going to make sh ensuring that the young women um, are able to get the health care that they need to be able to have healthy babies and but also continue with their education so that they can be able to graduate and then either go to college, get into go to one of the um, go to the service, do or do service or do something that was going to help them to move forward and take care of their families. So I just appreciate the work that you guys are doing for our young people in our community. Thank you, Councilman. One thing I want to add add is that we also serve fathers. So not just mothers, but mothers and fathers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And the last speaker on this legislation is um, Latanga Smith and she'll be and Margie Pizzuti will be coming with her. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, uh, President Ginther, Health and Human Service Chairwoman Tyson, and all members of uh, City Council. Uh, we are so pleased to be here this evening. I'm here with Latanga Smith, who is the relatively new membership and support services coordinator for the uh, Human Service Chamber of Franklin County. She has become the rock of Gibraltar for, uh, for our organization, and we're so glad that she's here. 
Uh, um, I'm Margie Pizzuti. I'm President and CEO of Goodwill Columbus. I'm also the Chair of the Human Service Chamber of Franklin County. Uh, I'm here also on behalf of uh, Yvonne Honeycutt, who is currently on vacation, and she's the Executive Director of the Human Service Chamber, as many of you know. Um, I'm here representing our 65 member human service agencies that work together to speak with one voice on behalf of um, our community's health and human service organizations. Uh, I am excited to be here to present to you and to thank you for the incredibly generous support that you have provided to the Human Service Chamber of Franklin County. Your unprecedented uh, commitment to financial support has been really helpful to us. We are especially thankful to Councilmember Tyson for her steadfast and passionate commitment to the work that we're doing. Every single member of council also um, uh, deserves thank you for what you do each and every day to support the work that we're doing. What I'm here to do briefly today is to thank you and to share with you a few quick updates on the Human Service Chamber. We want to share with you how we have invested in the dollars that you've provided to the Human Service Chamber um, as unprecedented resources. First of all, uh, in the spirit of building social enterprise within our organizations, uh, we have um, provided what's called Chamber Advantage. It's a hybrid social enterprise uh, program. Uh, that includes partnerships with Cause Impact and the Tony Wells Foundation um, to our members at a 75% discount. These are workshops that our members could probably not afford and it is allowing them to identify and conduct feasibility um, studies on ways that they can be sustainable, self-sustainable, leveraging uh, government funds, but really starting their own businesses, generating earned income in a way that keeps them sustainable beyond other funding sources. So we are excited about the opportunity. Twenty of our um, participants have been involved in these workshops to date, uh, and we are looking forward to dozens more participating um, in the months to come. The other HSC member service that we have been able to offer through your support is um, a partnership with a consulting lobbying firm, G2G. One of the things that you had emphasized is to raise up our voice on behalf of the health and human services community. And so we're doing that, working with uh, G2G on a platform of interest in the areas of education and support systems, health, housing, and jobs, and income security. Uh, we uh, finally, we talked about, and I, I introduced Latanga, um, the work that we're doing to reach out to our members, to give them the kind of support that they need, and hopefully to add new members uh, to the work that we're doing. We have, uh, on uh, March 26th, we have our annual meeting. This is our fifth anniversary of the Human Service Chamber. And we're going to be celebrating and honoring a variety of folks, including uh, Council Member Tyson as our champion, uh, Council Member or as Human Service Champion, <coughs> as well as other members um, of our of our organizations. We're very excited. We thank you so much for the support that you've provided to us, and look forward to continue to work with you. Thank you. Thank you for questions? coming down this evening. Any questions? No. And we will be showing up at the uh, April 7th. You, you have a, uh, a public hearing. We're excited to have our members come and share with you the work that they're doing as well through the financial support you've provided. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for coming down. Thank you for the work that you do for our community each and every day. And with that, I'm going to move for passage by voice vote. Is there a second? Clerk, call the roll by voice. Hardin, Klein, Mills. Page, Paley, Tyson? Yes. President Ginther? Yes, uh, legislation passes. Councilmember Tyson, we are um, at 6.30 now, so what I'd like to do is um, entertain uh, a motion to recess this meeting. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Pardon, Klein Mills, Page, Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. And they will, we will reconvene for zoning in uh, five minutes. Thank you.
Regular meeting number 15 will now come to order. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? So moved. Is there a second? Clerk call the roll. Harden Klein Mills, Page Paley Tyson, President Gitther. Any communications and reports received by the city clerk? No, there are not. The first reading is a 30-day legislation. No, there are not. Now go to the zoning committee. I chair that committee. All members serve on that committee. This evening in zoning, uh, we have 0350-2015 to rezone 148 West Lane Avenue, 43201 being 0 0.74 plus or minus acres located on the north side of West Lane Avenue, 100 plus or minus feet east of Neal Avenue from AR4, Apartment Residential District to CPD, Commercial Plan Development District. The applicant is Edwards Communities, care of Michael T. Shannon, attorney, 500 South Front Street, Suite 1200. Columbus, Ohio, 43215. The proposed use is office and residential development. City Department's recommendation is approval. Development Commission recommended approval. University Area Commission recommended approval. Any questions or comments regarding this legislation? If not, uh, first I'd move to a amend to emergency. Clerk, call the roll. Harden Klein Mills, Page Peely Tyson, President Ginther. Amended to emergency. Second, move for passage. Clerk, call the roll. Harden Klein Mills, Page Peely Tyson, President Ginther. Passed. Thank you. Next is 0562 2015 to rezone 3830 Big Run South Road, 43123, being 13.9 plus or minus acres, uh, plus, acres located on the north side of Big Run South Road, just southwest of I 270 from R. Rural District to LAR12, Limited Apartment Residential District. The applicant is Connie J. Klima, attorney, 145 East Rich Street, second floor, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Proposed use is multi unit residential development. Westland Area Commission recommended approval. City Department's recommendation is approval. Development Commission recommended approval. Any questions? Or comments regarding this legislation? There are no speakers. First of all, I move to waive second reading. Clerk call the roll. Harding Klein Mills, Page Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Second reading waived. Now I move for passage. Clerk call the roll. Harding Klein Mills, Page Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Passed. Next is 0677 2015 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3332.03, R1 residential. District 3312.11, drive-in sacking area, 3312.39, striking and marking, 3312.43, required surface for parking, 3332.21D, building lines, 3332.28, side or rear yard obstruction, Columbus City codes for property located. At 4989, Cleveland Avenue, 43229, to permit a restaurant with reduced Our state LLC, care of Ed Spears, Agent 1141, Copeland Lane, Westville, Ohio, 4081. Please use the restaurant, city department's recommendation is cool. Four hundred ninety one plus or minus feet east of Woodson Drive and one thousand one hundred twenty plus or minus feet north of Scioto Darby Creek Road from R one residential district to M two manufacturing district. The applicant is Lee's R V and Boat Storage, care of Dave Perry, David Perry Company Incorporated, one four five East Rich Street, third floor, Columbus, Ohio, four three two one five, and Donald Plank Attorney, Plank Law Firm, one four five East Rich Street. Third floor, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Proposed use is boat and RV storage. The city department's recommendation is approval. The development, com recom development commission recommended approval. Any questions or comments regarding this legislation? If not, first, I'd move to amend to emergency. 
Clerk, call the roll. Pardon, Klein Mills, Page Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. Amended to emergency. Now I move for passage. Clerk, call the roll. Pardon, Klein Mills, Page Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. Passed. Next is 0687 2015 to amend Ordinance 1966 2004, passed December 13, 2004, for property located at 601 Alta View Boulevard, 43085 by amending the limitation overlay text in Section 3 as it pertains to roof pitch requirements. The City Department's recommendation is approval. Any questions or comments from Council Members? First, I'd move to amend as submitted to the Clerk. Clerk, call the roll. Harden, Klein, Mills, Page, Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. Amended. Now uh, move to waive second reading. Clerk, call the roll. Harden, Klein, Mills, Page, Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. Second reading is waived and finally moved for passage. Clerk, call the roll. Harden, Klein, Mills, Page, Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. Legislation is passed. Is there anything else to come before the Zoning Committee this evening? If not, I'd uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Set, moved and seconded. Clerk, call the roll. Harden, Klein, Mills, Page, Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. We uh, will adjourn the Zoning Committee meeting, regular meeting number 15, and reconvene regular meeting number 14. Entertain a motion to reconvene regular meeting number 14. Clerk, call the roll. Pardon, Klein Mills, Page Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. We are reconvened, and I believe we are returning to the Health and Human Services Committee. Is that correct, Councilmember Tyson? Thank Turn you. it back over to you. Oh, thank you. I have Ordinance 0670-2015 to approve the funding request of Adam H. Board of Franklin County seeking financial assistance to address emergency human service need pursuant to Columbus City Code Section 371.02C to authorize the Director of Development to execute a grant agreement with a grant agreement with Adam H. Board of Franklin County to provide mental health and substance abuse prevention services to authorize expenditure of $127,472.37 from the Emergency Human Services Fund and to authorize an expenditure of $164,326.63 from the general fund and to declare an emergency. The total funding is is $288,799. And um, I think we have a speaker already at the podium, Ms. Nettie Ferguson. Hi. Um, um, to uh, President Ginther and Councilwoman Tyson and the um, members of council, and joining me is Stephanie Christian from uh, the Comp Drug Agency. I want to thank Councilwoman, Council, City Council, for their ongoing support of prevention services for our youth. and. As you know, many of our young people are faced with a multiple a number of problems, including the use of alcohol and other drugs. Uh, Adam provides an array of early prevention and early intervention services for youth in school, after school, and even during the summer to ensure that they remain alcohol and drug free as well as safe. These programs represented here tonight are those who are on the front lines of offering services and activities that move young people away from these problems and helping them to live healthy, productive lives. Adam offers over $6 million investment for prevention and early intervention services in Franklin County through neighborhood organizations. And the $288,799 support from the city for our prevention programs helped to leverage nearly $500,000 from Adam funds for expended services. And this city funds help us to partner together to serve over 700 young people with quality programs. It is certainly well documented that prevention programs have a tremendous impact on decision points for young people not only to not use alcohol and other drugs, but to succeed in school and, as many of you know, to become leaders in the community. But the overall impact that their joint efforts are to having an overall health and well-being for our community. Again, I want to thank the City Council and particularly uh, Councilwoman Tyson for ensuring that this great collaboration to positively impact the lives of young people uh, in our community. Thank you for support from the Adam H. Board of Central Ohio, and as you know, uh, prevention works and recovery do happen. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
and um, just appreciate your work. And we certainly know that, that the work that you've been doing is, is critically important. And again, this money is focusing on our youth. Yes. And thank you very much for coming down this evening to support the legislation. You're welcome. Thank you. And I move for passage. Second. Hardin Klein Mills, Page Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. The next ordinance is 0671-2015 to approve the funding request of the community research partner seeking financial assistance to address an emergency human service need pursuant to Columbus City Code 371.02C to authorize the Director of Development to execute a grant agreement with the community research partners to provide technical assistance to authorize the expenditure of $57,660.90 from the Emergency Human Services Fund and to authorize expenditure of $76,123.10 from the General Fund to declare an emergency. The total funding is $133,780. $84. And so um, we have Ms. Lynette Cook, who is here, um, to speak on this legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Lynette. <laughs> President Ginther, council members, thank you for this opportunity. Thank, for, thank you for your ongoing support of community research partners, lovingly known as CRP. As you know, CRP is a partnership of the city, Franklin County, the Ohio State University, and the United Way of Central Ohio. Um, the money that the city provides the, the money that you're considering tonight would be level funding for the money that we have right now. We use the city's money in two different ways. Um, one is to provide community technical assistance and access to data. So in partnership with MORPSI, we have data source and we're currently in ongoing conversations with an advisory council to see how we can make data source better um, and make data more accessible for communities. Um, the other uh, major um, use of city funds are the partner hours, the partner projects that we do, primarily for the Department of Development, but also for Columbus Public Health. I'd be happy to entertain any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you for coming down, Ms. Cook, and I certainly just appreciate the work that you have done for us in the past, and even just this year, we had a great presentation from one of your staff members um, when we had um, the CDBG um, a report earlier this year, and I know that they're responsible for the City of Columbus Consolidated Plan and the proposed action plan program year. And so we just appreciate the work that you do to provide us with information so that we can make sure that we're providing our residents with the services that they say that they need based on your conversations with them. So thank you for coming down and sharing your data you. with the city. Thank you so much. And with that, I'll move for passage. Pardon, Klein Mills, Page Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. The next ordinance is 0672-2015 to approve the funding request of Hands on Central Ohio seeking financial assistance to address, again, emergency human service need pursuant to Columbus City Code 371.02C to authorize the Director of Development to execute a grant agreement with Hands on Central Ohio to provide referral services to the residents of Columbus to authorize expenditure of $83,036.03 from the Emergency Human Service Fund and to authorize expenditure of $100. $109,622.97 from the general fund and to declare an emergency. The total funding is $192,659. And Mr. Ernest Perry, who um, is the president of the organization from Hands On, is here to make a few comments on this legislation. Good evening, President Ginther, President Pro Tem Mills. Uh, Chairwoman Tyson and other members of council, it's an honor to stand before you again today and express uh, my thanks for your longstanding support of Hands on Central Ohio and your deep commitment to human services in general in the City of Columbus. Uh, this specific piece of legislation, Ordinance 0672-2015, uh, represents this support and is a cornerstone of the human services system in the City of Columbus. Uh, it provides funds necessary to ensure centralized, coordinated access to our community's vast network of resources, uh, including emergency food and other critical programs and services through 211, uh, which is this community's uh, largest and most comprehensive information and referral service. Uh, as operator of 211 here, we are one of two internationally accredited information and referral service providers in the City of Columbus and provide access to hundreds of thousands of our city's residents each year to the items that they need. Um, our community's 211 is a vital tool in its collective effort to ensure the greatest and highest use of all of our resources. 
as well as strengthen and sustain our neighborhoods and ensure the health and safety of young people and their families and provide access to a wide range of opportunities through education and other experiences. Thank you for considering this legislation and its impact on our city's residents, neighborhoods, the human service system, and the City of Columbus in general. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perry. And I do really appreciate the work that you do with the City of Columbus. So you, community research partners, and as well as um, Adam H. are real partners with us, city partners, and we appreciate your work. Thank you so very much for coming down this evening. Thank you for the invitation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I move for passage. Hart and Klein Mills, Page Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. Our next speaker, uh, our next ordinance and speaker is 0690-2015, um, and it is um, for the Community Shelter Board. I just want to say that there's a number of pieces of legislation for the Community Shelter Board. I'm going to ask Michelle Harris to start walking towards the podium. She can speak on all the different pieces, even though they're not all together. Um, collectively, tonight, the Community Shelter Board will be receiving we're receiving, should we pass this legislation, $5,475,258. I also want to say that just the legislation we're passing this evening for the human services as well as the arts, in terms of looking at our quality of life, it's close to about $16 million that will be given to these communities. And so I just appreciate their work. And um, so, Michelle, I will, um, before I even read the legislation, maybe just give an overview and then I'll just be able to on all three different pieces, because you know what they all have, all four pieces, you know what they all are. If you'll just give us an overview of that, then I'll read the legislation. Uh, thanks, uh, Council Chair Tyson, Council President Ginther, and members of Council. Community Shelter Board oversees a network of emergency shelters that serve more than 10,000 distinct people each year. And the legislation before you tonight provides funding to help us do three things. First is to provide access to a safety net. Second is to keep people safe. And sec uh, third is to restabilize them in housing. We provide access to a safety net with a virtual homeless hotline through Hands on Central Ohio. Calls are answered 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And last year, that hotline took over 95,000 calls and served 11,000 unique individuals um, that were facing homelessness with an average wait time of 5 minutes and 33 seconds. The hotline staffs, um, people, uh, the people in the hotline help identify and secure uh, any other option than shelter whenever possible, and when that is not possible, um, they are admitted into shelter. Second, we keep people safe by providing a network of emergency shelters that serve as a safety net for people who are experiencing the crisis of their life. And each shelter offers a safe place to sleep, a shower, a warm meal, and access to urgent medical needs. Shelter truly is a safety net. And the funding you provide help keeps these critically needed shelter beds open at various facilities across the community. We have more than double the number of beds available to women with the opening of the new Van Buren Center. And as you know, this winter has been particularly difficult, and we are looking forward to opening our men's beds as well. And third, your funding helps to restabilize people in housing in a number of ways. We're delivering services through the new Navigator program, working on employment and job training, support services, medical care, and housing resources, all focused on ending homelessness, ending the crisis quickly, and stabilizing people in housing. In data and reports we provided to you last week, we can already see some improvement in outcomes for single adults as a result of this new programming. Lengths of stay in shelter are decreasing and more people are getting into housing. We're providing financial assistance for rent, security deposits, utility costs, and moving expenses. And for those experiences long-term or repeated homelessness, we're providing permanent supportive housing. The Community Shelter Board is deeply grateful for your support. You are our number one partner and investor, and uh, we could not do this work without you. Thank you, Michelle. Any questions for Michelle? Thank you. Okay. I just appreciate the work that you're doing. I know you weren't in today, but you made a point to come down and to share these facts with us today. So I appreciate your coming down. And um, so with that, I'll read the legislation and hopefully move for passage. So ordinance numbers 0690-2015 is to authorize the Director of Department of Development to enter into a contract with the Community Shelter Board for the purpose of continuing city support of a safety net program for the homeless emergency shelters related to homeless shelter services and homeless prevention and transition services and to authorize the expenditure of two million eight hundred and seventy two thousand three hundred and four dollars from the general from the general fund and to declare an emergency. I move for passage. 
Hart and Klein Mills, Page Peely Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. The next ordinance is 0691-2015 to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into the contract with the Community Shelter Board to support the Real Rebuilding Lives Program to authorize expenditure of $831,705 from the General Fund and $71,029 from the Community Development Block Grant Fund and to declare an emergency. Again, this is to support the Rebuilding Lives Program um, and supports the short-term needs of homeless men and women through the improved safety net of emergency shelter and the long-term needs through a development and operation of supportive, permanent supportive housing. Uh, I move for passage. Harding Klein Mills, Page Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. The next ordinance is 0709-2015 to finance the Director of Finance and Management to establish a purchase order with Settlefy Pastor for the purchase of various flu zone influenza virus vaccines for Columbus Public Health to weigh the competitive bidding process to authorize expenditure of $36,000 from the Health Special Revenue Fund and to pay the cost thereof and to declare an emergency. Again, we are getting ready for um, the flu season. I feel like we're still in the flu season but we're getting ready for the 2015-16 flu season and to be able to get the flu shots that are needed for the residents of our community we need to order the we need to order the um, vaccine right now we have to order it before the 31st of this month and so that's why we're also asking to waive competitive bidding because we need to only order it from this particular this particular organization and so with that I will um, move for passage Harding Klein Mills, Page Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. The next order is 0767 2015 to authorize the director of the Department of Development to enter into a contract with the Community Shelter Board for the administration of the Emergency Solutions Grant for the provision of support services to homeless individuals and to authorize the appropriation and expenditure of $595,608 from the General Government Grant Fund and to declare an emergency. This money has been awarded from um, from HUD, um, and so we appreciate getting these dollars to support um, the work that we're doing around homelessness. I move for passage. Harden Klein Mills, Page Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. The next ordinance is 0842-2015 to authorize the director of the Department of Development to enter into the contract with the Community Shelter Board for the purpose of implementing the single adult crisis response system to authorize expenditure of $1,104,612 from the general fund and to declare an emergency. Um, this, these dollars are for um, the new adult crisis response system. So it's a new Van Buren emergency shelter addressing the needs of men and women and also families. Um, second are the case managers of the navigator systems to connect individuals with, um, with organizations to help them to move forward um, out of the shelter and then also to support the relationships with key partner agencies. And with that, I move for passage. Harding Klein Mills, Page Peely Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. I would now ask Councilmember Mills to be able to read the next legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Tyson. Uh, tonight, I'd like to present for consideration Ordinance 0858-2015 to approve the funding request of Alvis House seeking financial assistance to address an emergency human service need pursuant to Columbus City Code to authorize a Director of Development to execute a grant agreement with Alvis House to provide the Community Empowering Change Program to authorize expenditure of $84,694 from the Emergency Human Services Fund to authorize expenditure of $111,811 from the general fund and to declare an emergency. If there are no comments or questions, I'd like to move for passage and like to call for a vote by voice. Hardin? Yes. Klein? Mills? Yes. Page? Paley? Tyson? Abstain. President Ginther? I'd like to uh, relinquish the floor back to Chairwoman Tyson for the remainder of the committee. Thank you, President Pro Tem Mills. And that next ordinance is 0859-2015 
to approve the funding request of the Mental Health Food Bank seeking financial assistance to address an emergency human service need pursuant to Columbus City Code to authorize the Director of Development to execute a grant agreement with the Mental Health Food Bank to provide the Produce Markets Program and to authorize expenditure of $79,476 from the Emergency Human Service Fund and to authorize expenditure of $104,924 from the General Fund and to declare an emergency. And I would ask um, move for approval by voice vote. Hardin? Yes. Klein? Mills? Yes. Page? Yes. Paley? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Ginther? Yes. Thank you. That's all I have on my committees this evening. Thank you, uh, Council Member Tyson. Our next committee is the Public Service and Transportation Committee. Council Member Hardin chairs that committee. Mr. Chairman, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Ginther. Tonight in Public Service and Transportation, we have Ordinance 0505-2015 uh, 0 0 <laughs> to authorize and direct the City Auditor to transfer cash and appropriation within the Streets and Highway Bond Fund, the Street and Highway Improvement Fund, and, and the Build America's Bond Fund to authorize the Director of Public Service to expend $2,103,460 or so much thereof as may be necessary to reimburse the Street Construction Maintenance and Repair Fund and to declare an emergency. And if there are no questions, I move for passage. Harding Klein Mills, Paige Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. Next, I have uh, 0695, 2015, to authorize the Director of the Department of Finance and Management to enter into a contract with Ohio Department of Transportation and a yet-to-be-named vendor for the purchase of rock salt based on the terms of the cooperative purchase uh, contract to be established by ODOT to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to establish blanket purchase orders for rock salt and to authorize expenditure of $2 million from the Municipal Motor Vehicle License Tax Fund, $45,000 from the uh, Sewerage System Operation Fund, $70,000 from the Water Systems Operating Fund, and $4,000 from the Electricity Systems Operating Fund, and to declare an emergency. Uh, this ordinance allows the Department of Public Service to re replenish the city's rock salt re reserves after the cold and snowy winter that we had. Uh, it's actually snowing outside now. <laughs> I'd also like to, um, to remark that the city of Columbus' snow warriors have earned the city's uh, a well-deserved award this past winter. The American Public Works Association has now announced that they'll be presenting Columbus the National Award for Excellence for our Snow and Ice Control Plan, uh, which guides our snow warriors in providing efficient and timely snow removal. Um, and so as we are hopefully ending this snow season, uh, we are already planning for the next one. and. Uh, I want to thank uh, Public Service Department, um, Director Davies, uh, and uh, Director Gallagher is here to speak. Thank you, President Ginther, Chair Hardin, and other council members. Um, like Council Member Hardin said, we thought we were done with snow, but we had a little surprise um, today for all of us. We are out there fighting that. Um, as we speak. However, this year, up till today, we had used about 29,000 tons of salt at a cost of a little over $2 million. Um, that was a little more than we spent last year just because the cost of salt had gone up quite a bit this year. With those 29,000 tons of salt, we did, 12, well, now 13 winter storms um, where we received approximately 29 inches of snow. And we just wanted to thank the Department of Public Utilities and um, Recreation and Parks for their help. They sent us drivers this year over to public service and also for the first time this year we used our refuse drivers so we were able to get into those neighborhood streets quicker. So we thank council members for all your support on that and we look forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you. Thank you, Director. If there are no uh, questions, I move for passage. Hardin Klein Mills, Paige Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. That is all we have for public service and transportation this evening. Uh, is it all right if I move forward to small and minority business? Thank you. Uh, we have um, 0060X to approve the plan for improvement and services to be provided by the Discovery Special Improvement District for Columbus 
Inc. and to approve the uh, pro pro uh, properties of the Municipal Corp uh, Corporation in said plan for improvements and services. This resolution approves the Discovery uh, Special Improvement District's plan for improvement and services. For the sake of expediency, I'd also like to discuss Ordinance 0639-2015, uh, which approves the Discovery SIDS petition and reincorporates them. First, I'd like to uh, 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 defer or open up for uh, to Deputy Director Jones if you have any extra comments, and if not. I do not. I believe that you have a speaker on this one tonight. Perfect. Okay. He's the uh, expert, so. <laughs> Thank you, Director. Uh, then I would ask uh, Executive Director Mr. Cleve Risecker to come to the podium. President Ginther, uh, Chairman Hardin, Council Members, thank you very much. My name is Cleve Risecker. I'm Executive Director of Discovery Special Improvement District. You're being asked tonight to reauthorize Discovery Special Improvement District for the second time. So this would be the third five-year plan for services for the SID. On the SID, uh, all special improvement districts are self-help tools for property owners in older uh, urban areas um, that have lots of fractured ownership that really have a hard time competing with a place like Easton, where you have a single owner who has common lease terms and charges not only rent, but also charges for landscaping and marketing and, and uh, security. Well, the Discovery Special Improvement District has 250 property owners who would never get any sort of collective action if it weren't for this mechanism called a SID, where owners representing 60 percent of the property can ask you to levy an assessment to pay for soft services and improvements. And once that is levied, then all the private property owners within that area are required to pay into a common fund. It really allows the active owners in an area to set the agenda and make sure everyone is, is contributing to the, the life of the neighborhood. The way this is written, um, uh, the statute really protects property owners and the city from poorly run special improvement districts um, because the state law requires each SID to sunset automatically. So you'll see us coming back every five years because we always set up five-year plans after which, um, unless the property owners affirmatively petition to reauthorize, and you decide you want to allow that, um, the, the SID would go away. So it's, there's a very high degree of accountability. If you reauthorize Discovery SID, you will allow the SID to operate from January of 2016 through the end of 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Rick Secker. Uh, we also have a speaker, uh, Mr. Stan Harris. Would you come to the podium and please uh, state your name and any organization that you may represent? Thank you, President Ginther, Chairman Hardin, Council Members. My name is Stan Harris and I live at 623 Franklin Avenue, Ohio, along with my wife and three-year-old daughter. I am currently Chairman of the, Discovery Special, of the Discovery Special Improvement District and have been a resident of the Discovery District for over 20 years. Since the SID was created 15 years ago, the neighborhood has become a better place to live. The SID has provided services such as the safety ambassadors and outreach services that have addressed the safety concerns of the neighborhood. The SID has also supported and sponsored activities for the community, such as the PB&J PB concert series, and the movie series, and the Topiary Park, which have been very popular. As a resident, the SID has been able to resolve any issues or concerns that I have brought to their attention. I believe the SID has been a positive impact on the Discovery District as a resident, I am very happy with the services that the SID has provided the neighborhood, and as a board member, I'm proud to be associated with people who care and work hard for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. If there are, are any further questions, I move for passage. Harden Klein Mills, Page Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. I'm going to also go to 0639 that uh, uh, is the sister uh, piece to this uh, to approve the Discovery Special Improvement District of Columbus Inc. petition and articles of incorporation and inclusion of the properties owned by the City of Columbus in said district and to declare an emergency. If there are no further questions, I move for passage. Hardin Klein Mills, Page Paley Tyson, President Ginther. 
Next, I have 0061X-2015 to approve the initial plan for improvements and services to the provided uh, by the University District Special Improvement District of Columbus, Inc. Uh, this resolution approves the University Special Improvement District's plan for improvements and services. Once again, for the sake of expediency, I would also like to discuss Ordinance 0641-2015, which approves the University CIS petition and incorporates them. If approved, this would be Columbus's fifth special improvement district. Um, I would ask that Executive Director of the University Business Association, Mr. Matt Matthew Hansen, he is here with us this evening. If he would come forward, he's done a good job of spearheading this effort to create uh, uh, this uh, iteration for the University SID. Uh, Mr. Mr. Hansen, is there anything you'd like to share on this ordinance? Thank you, Council Member Hardin. President Genther and members of council, my name is Matthew Hansen, Executive Director of the University Community Business Association. Uh, I have been working with property owners in the University District area for well over a year now, uh, coordinating their input to gather the uh, Special Improvement District needs for the University District area. Our uh, University District High Street area is uh, heavily trafficked by pedestrians, uh, cars, and has many events. And so we are looking to uh, get the property owners together to organize uh, additional services, including litter pickup, graffiti removal, uh, additional safety services, and ambassador services for the district. Uh, property owners have a real vested interest in creating a welcoming environment and really want to change the notions of the university district to make it a more inviting place to live uh, and visit. Uh, the proposed plan of services. Uh, would uh, be enacted starting uh, July 2016 and would run through uh, June 2021. Thank you, Mr. Hansen. I um, just want to say thank you for uh, your work on this. Uh, we worked pretty closely over the last couple months uh, on getting, getting this through. I have appreciated your outreach to the community. We held a public hearing on March 8th, I believe, and uh, uh, you have done a lot of outreach in the community, so I appreciate that. Uh, we do have, if there are no questions you're, from my colleagues, you are good. Thank you. We do have some uh, speakers. Uh, first, I have Scott Solomon. If you would approach the podium and, and uh, present your organization you may represent and your address, I would appreciate it. Hi, my name is Scott Solomon. I am with Oxford Realty. My address is 68 South 4th Street, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. I am pleased to be in front of you folks. I have met a lot of you over the years. Uh, we are a property owner in the campus area of both apartments and commercial retail spaces. We feel that this uh, SID is very important to the vitalization of the uh, campus area. It is uh, very important for us to, to have a good community for all of our uh, residents and uh, all of our commercial businesses to operate. We also own properties in other parts of the city that are involved in SIDS, and uh, it's been very successful. And it, we feel this is very important for us to have this SID approved. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. And we have Ms. Doreen Uhouse Sauer. Good evening. Good evening. President Genther, Councilman Hardin, esteemed members of City Council, thank you. Um, I am President of the University Area Commission. I live at 2111 Iuka uh, Avenue. And um, I, although the Area Commission does not need to sign off on this SID, I wanted to come before you to assure you that there has been historic support for a SID. This is really a dream come true. And at my age, I think they just look at me for the historic support part, because uh. I, can, I can testify to that part of it. Um, this comes at an unbelievably exciting time for us in the university area. Uh, we are so thankful for everything that uh, Matt, uh, Matthew has done for uh, UDO and UCBA, but also for the property owners of, like Mr. Solomon and others who have stepped forward. Um, this is coming, as you know, at the same time you have approved the university area plan, and there have been announcements uh, in the paper uh, projecting that OSU is interested in an arts district that will kind of cross over into the community. So um, we are so excited about this, and thank you for your support. Thank you, Ms. Sauer. I think we have one more gentleman, but I think he is Mr. Ed Goffin. 
he is gone. All right. Well, with that, if there are no further questions, I, I apologize. Uh, Council President Pro Tem Mills. Thank you, Chair Harden. I just wanted to um, share the, my comments related to uh, Cleve and the members working together. It is very rewarding to see neighborhood to neighborhood. There is a lot of cooperative sharing of information of best practices. That is what we hope to happen. And I am very happy of all the hard work to bringing this SID forward. And thank you, Councilmember Harden, for working with the group and getting them to a place. But I also want to thank Lee for his work. I have been in a few neighborhoods where he is already having an impact on some others. And so I have given him a nickname, Clee Ricksecker, the SID maker. So. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for um, being very open with your time, your energy, and expertise with many of our neighborhoods who are looking for this type of support and this type of effort in their own community. So thank you for being as generous with your, your expertise as you have been. Thank you. And if there are no uh, further questions, I move for passage. Harden Klein Mills, Paige Paley Tyson, President Ginther. And lastly, we have 0641-2015 to approve the University, Special, uh, University District Special Improvement District of Columbus, Inc. Petition and Articles of Incorporation and to declare an emergency. There are no questions. I move for passage. Harden Klein Mills, Paige Pele Tyson, President Ginther. That is all we have for Small and Minority Business uh, Committee this evening. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Harden, our next committee is the Public Safety Committee. Council Member Klein chairs that committee. Mr. Chairman, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. The first is 538 2015 to amend the 2014 capital improvement budget to authorize the appropriation and transfer of $250,000 within the General Permanent Improvement Fund to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to enter into a contract with the purchase of conducted electrical weapons and related warranties and supplies with Vance's Outdoor, Inc. for the Division of Police to waive competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code and to declare an emergency. Uh, this expenditure uh, will allow the City of Columbus to purchase approximately 156 tasers uh, and relatable equipment uh, for the Division of Police. Uh, our Division of Police is a terrific group of men and women uh, who know that in order to get better, they always must be uh, doing their best uh, and most up-to-date policies and trainings and procedures uh, and use the best available technology to keep our officers and the community safe uh, in those situations where the use of force is required. Uh, with these tasers uh, and this expenditure, all frontline officers on the beat uh, will have a taser while on duty. Uh, this ordinance is not possible without the uh, assistance and guidance of the Council President, Council President Andy Ginther, uh, who uh, helped spearhead and shepherd this expenditure through the City Council. Uh, so thank you, Council President, for that. Uh, would you like to offer any comments? Uh, any comments or questions from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Harden Klein Mills, Page Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Next is 629 to 2015 to authorize and direct the Director of the Department of Public Safety to enter into a contract with Medical Priority Consultants Inc. doing business as Priority Dispatch to provide ProQA software licenses and training for 911 call takers in accordance with the sole source provisions of the Columbus City Code to authorize the appropriation and expenditure of $249,950 from the E911 fund and to declare an emergency. Director speaks. President Ginther, Chairman Klein, members of Council. Uh, thank you. ProQA is state-of-the-art uh, dispatching software. This software will, uh, will be training our call takers. It will make us more efficient and hopefully we'll have even faster response times. Uh, I thank you again for your investment in public safety. Any questions or comments for the director? Seeing none, I move for passage. Harden Klein Mills, Paige Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Moving to technology. 556-2015 to authorize the Director of the Department of Technology to continue an agreement with Ornet OSU for existing VMware software licensing, maintenance and support services to waive competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code to authorize the expenditure of $109,146.32 from the Department of Technology Information Services Division Internal Service Fund and to declare an emergency. Deputy Director, could you, oh, I'm sorry, Deputy Director, Could you maybe explain why we're waiving competitive bidding provisions? Thank you. President Ginther, um, Chairman Klein, 
other members of council. Uh, this is a continuation uh, the contract, and uh, it's been uh, demonstrated through previous bids that ORNET pricing discounts for VMware software are greater than can be achieved through the bid process uh, in previous VMware purchases. ORNET pricing was 40% lower than the lowest bid response we got. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Harding Klein Mills, Paige Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. 749 2015 to authorize the Director of the Department of Technology to continue a contract with Emerson Network Power, Libert Services Inc., formerly known as Libert Global Services, for annual maintenance and related services associated with the un. un Interrupted power supply system to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code. Authorize the expenditure of seventy thousand dollars, seventy thousand and seven dollars and sixty cents uh, from the Department of Technology Information Services Division Internal Service. Un and declare an emergency. Again, Deputy Director, on the waiving competitive bidding. Uh, President Ginther, Chair Klein, members of Council. Uh, this is uh, also another continuation contract. Uh, all the making service. Libre GPS systems are available from uh, other suppliers. Emerson Network Power, uh, Libre Services is the only factory authorized service provider uh, for this GPS equipment. Uh, where alternative providers. So, GPS software required to utilize Libre technicians, Emerson policies to build the end user directly, and not a third party. Uh, nor does Emerson support third party organizations with technical backup or guaranteed uh, parts availability. Okay, thank you for the explanation. Any questions or comments? I will community organizations, as well as uh, visited uh, several thousand homes okay. uh, in the targeted areas, and this will allow us to continue that uh, education and community outreach. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments to the Council Member Paley? I want to thank the Department of Utilities for all their work on Blueprint Columbus. The outreach is critically important that we have buy-in from the community in order to make this program work. It is the state-of-the-art program that will put Columbus on the map with regards to clean water and how we produce clean water. So again, thank you um, to Public Utilities for their hard work on Blueprint Columbus. Thank you, Councilmember Paley. Any other questions or comments? I'd first like to take it from the table. Hardin? Klein? Yes. Mills? Page? Yes. Paley? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Ginther? Move for passage by voice vote. Hardin? Yes. Klein? Yes. Mills? Yes. Page? Yes. Paley? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Ginther? And that wraps up my committees, Council President. Thank you, Councilmember Klein. Our next committee is the Development Committee. President Pro Tem Mills chairs the committee. Madam Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Ginther. Tonight in the Department of Development, I'd like to present the following ordinances for consideration, beginning with Ordinance 0645, to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into contracts with various contractors to provide maintenance services on city-owned property being held in the land bank to authorize the expenditure of $450,000 from the Land Management Fund to weigh the competitive bidding requirements of City Code Chapter 329 and to declare an emergency. Just for additional clarification, maintenance services under these contracts include removing trash and debris, uh, clean and abate vacant lots, secure structures, remove graffiti, trim trees, and other similar work. 
A total of 11 companies responded to the RFP and 10 companies were selected. If there are no other comments or questions, I'd like to move for passage. Hardin Klein Mills, Page Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Next, staff ordinance 0674 2015 to authorize a director of the Department of Development to enter into contracts with Rebuilding Together Central Ohio, Life Care Alliance, and the Economic and Community Development Institute for the implementation of the Chores Basic Home Maintenance and Repair Program to authorize the expenditure of $300,000 from the Community Development Block Grant Fund and to declare an emergency. These funds are used to meet the housing needs identified in the 2015-2019 Consolidated Plan of which was passed earlier this year. The programs provide housing rehabilitation assistance, lead paint hazard control, home maintenance repairs for elderly and disabled households, and accessibility modifications. Eligible homeowners receive home repair services, rebuilding together Central Ohio and Life Care Alliance, and ECDI will be the program providers to the neighborhoods within the corporate limits of Columbus. This program will help about 325 households. If there are no other comments or questions, I'd like to move for passage. Harden Klein Mills, Page Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Next, I have Ordinance 0684 2015 to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into a contract with the Community Development Collaborative of Greater Columbus to provide CHOTO operating support to authorize the expenditure of $152,035 from the Home Fund and to declare an emergency. Just in inside language of CHOTO is community housing development organizations, which are nonprofit organizations that work in neighborhoods to develop affordable housing through rehabilitation of existing housing stock or new infill construction. This important work will authorize the funds through the Department of Development and assist in the organizational capacity of the following community housing development organizations. I was getting ready to say CHOTOs again. I want to make sure we all understand the function of, of uh, this particular legislation. The collaborative will administer contracts for the following, Community Development for All People, Franklinton Development Association, Central Ohio Housing Development Organization, and Greater London Development Corporation. If there are no other comments or questions, I'd like to move for passage. Harding Klein Mills, Page Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Next, I have Ordinance 0688-2015 to authorize the appropriation of $2,415,709 from the 2015 Home Fund to the Department of Development to authorize expenditure of $2,259,604 from the 2015 Home Fund to provide funding for various approved 2015 programs and to declare an emergency. Uh, just for note, the City of Columbus has been awarded $3,040,709 by the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, otherwise known as HUD, under fiscal year 2015 to fund various housing assistance activities under the Home Investment Partnerships Act. If there are no other comments or questions, I'd like to move for passage. Hardin Klein Mills, Page Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. I'd like to go back to page 13 to present Ordinance 0693-2015. Ordinance 0693-2015 is to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to execute any and all necessary agreements and deeds for conveyance of title of one parcel of real property 1639 is 41 Oak Street held in the land bank pursuant to the land realization program and to declare an emergency. I believe there are three speakers on this particular ordinance. I'd like to ask Mr. Nathaniel George Wilkins to please approach the podium. Mr. Wilkins, if you'll please state your name and address in any organizations that you represent. I believe you have. Um, asked to speak on this ordinance in support of this particular ordinance. 1612 Arlington Avenue, the chairman is solely vacant and abandoned property. I just want whoever gets this parcel, just want that owner to hold at higher standards by taking care of his yard by getting this parcel. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. I believe our second speaker on Ordinance 0693-2015 is Ms. Jeanette Bird. 
Ms. Bird, if you would please approach the podium and share your comments. Ms. Bird. Let the record reflect that a call for Ms. Bird to present her comments against Ordinance 0693 2015. Our final speaker on this ordinance is David Rico. Let the record reflect Mr. Rico is not present uh, when his name was called. If there are no other comments or questions, I request to move to table this ordinance for two weeks. Two weeks. Hart and Klein Mills, Paige Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. That's all I have in development. May I move to the Environment Committee? Is there a second? Uh, clerk, call the roll. Harding Klein Mills, Paige Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Reconsidering um, this legislation and the motion to table, table for two weeks. Um, we need to table indefinitely. Entertain a motion to table indefinitely. Is there a second? Second. Clerk, call the roll. Harding Klein Mills, Paige Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Tabled indefinitely. On to environment. Thank you. Tonight in the Environment Committee, I'd like to present for consideration Ordinance 0546-2015 to authorize the Director of Public Service to enter into a revenue contract with the Solid Waste Authority of Central Ohio, otherwise known as SWACO, for the Division of Refuge Collection to administer the 2015 Solid Waste Inspection Anti-Dumping Enforcement Program and to authorize the appropriation of $75,200 within a general government grant fund. If there are no other comments or questions, I'd like to move for passage. Hart and Klein Mills, Page Bailey, Tyson, President Ginther. That's all I have it by way of ordinance for consideration this evening. I have one announcement. I'd like to mention that today is National Puppy Day. And I just want to um, give thanks as we can as many days as possible to thank the Capital Area Humane Society who care for the many animals in our community. But it is National Puppy Day. And I just wanted to thank the Capital Area Humane Society for their work and cooperation. That's all I have this evening. Thank you, President Pro Tem Mills. Uh, our final committee this evening is the Recreation and Parks Committee. Council Member Page chairs that committee. Madam Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Ginther. This evening in Recreation and Parks, we have Ordinance 0616-2015 to authorize and direct the Director of Recreation and Parks to apply for a grant with the Franklin County Board of Commissioners doing business as Franklin County Senior Options to accept said grant in the amount of $11,694.68 to enter into an agreement with the Franklin County Board of Commissioners doing business as Franklin County Senior Options for funding to support the 50 plus fitness programs to authorize an appropriation of $11,694.68 from the unappropriated balance of the Recreation and Parks Grant Fund to the Recreation and Parks Department and to declare an emergency. This grant will enable the department to purchase various pieces of fitness equipment and partner with other health and wellness organizations in order to educate our older citizens so they are able to maintain healthy lifestyles and be in better positions to make sound choices in their lives. This grant will also be used to continue the 50 plus fitness programs at the four multi-generational recreation centers that offer adult, older adult programs during 2015. If there are no comments or questions, I move for passage. Second. Hardin Klein Mills, Page Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. And my last ordinance, 0720-2015 to authorize and direct the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter into an agreement with the Community Arts Project Incorporated to provide financial support toward community arts programming and facility operation and maintenance, to authorize the expenditure of $100,000 from the Recreation and Parks Operating Fund and to declare an emergency. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Second. 
Pardon, Klein Mills, Paige Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you, President Ginther. Councilmember Tyson, you had an uh, announcement. Yes. Thank you, Councilmember Page. Councilmember Tyson. Thank you, President Ginther. Um, March is the National Nutrition Month, and the Columbus Public Health is having their final event on March 27th from 8 o'clock in the morning until 12.30, and it is in the Columbus Public Health Auditorium. If you attend, you have one more chance to win and some, different, some awesome prizes, which include the fit, uh, a Fitbit, the the Go, Cold Go bike passes, cookbooks, physical health equipment, etc. So all programs highlighted throughout this month will showcase your information and materials. So come by and take the fitness challenge and be a part of the fitness challenge and win some great prizes. Again, this week, March 27th from 8 a.m. to 12.30. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Tyson. Anything else to come before uh, Council this evening? If not, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Pardon, Klein Mills, Page Bailey Tyson, President Ginther. We stand adjourned, and we do have uh, a couple of non-agenda speakers this evening. We'll take them momentarily.